Okay, so this one is a continuation of our previous lesson. So last time, we did not have our class since I was sick. And um, today, we will have a leadership training. So uh, that is the reason why I chose to record the continuation of the chapter one. So our ano, last topic was about antibiotics and insulin, which are two groups of drugs that require batch certification from the Food and Drug Administration before they can be marketed. Okay. So after this, we will be talking about statistics. So this is just a review of your statistics since um, QC testing involves numerical data and for us to process our data so that we can analyze it and interpret uh, the numerical data, we need, the, uh, we need statistics or the statistical tools. So the first one here is the mean or our arithmetic average. So I believe you are very familiar on how to get the mean. All you need to do is to add all the scores or add all the numerical data and you have to divide it kung uh, gaano sila karami. So for example, you have 10 data all in all. You have to, to add everything and then divide it by 10. So that's how you get the mean. After the mean, we have here the average deviation. So on the screen, you can see the definition of the average deviation, which is calculated using this formula. So let's just use let's just use AD na lang for average deviation. And then again, this is actually um, summation of the difference between the score and the mean. Uh, let me just put a bar na lang on the mean, and then irregardless of the sign. So absolute number tayo dito. Um, and then divide it by the number of determination. So this is small letter N or this is our sample size. So again, this is our average deviation, summation of the difference between the each score and the mean. Sa i-add natin lahat and then divided by the number of determinations or the sample size. Let me give you first the formula for each statistical test and then later on we'll have an example. Example na computation. Now, after the average deviation, we have the so-called relative average deviation or the RAD. So how do we compute for the relative average deviation? This is just AD or the average deviation uh, divided by the mean, the computed mean for the given set of data times 100. So after the mean, we will be computing for the deviations. Uh, we measure the variations of our data. In QC testing, it is very important for us to ensure that the collected data are precise, meaning they should agree with each other. They are close with each other. That is the reason why we are computing for the average deviation, relative average deviation, and the most common and the most important measure of variation, which is the standard deviation. So in computing this, we will actually know how far the collected data are from the mean, and it will give us a picture whether these data agree with each other or not. So when we get a low standard deviation, meaning a very low number for the SD, that means that our collected data are very close to the mean and vice versa and that they agree with each other. Uh, in short, our data our set of data is precise. Okay? Yan yung meaning 
ng standard deviation. So definitely, if we get a very large number for our standard deviation, it means that uh, the data are far from the mean. They don't agree with each other and thus they are not precise. And that is problematic for QC testing. Um, so we have to repeat the same procedure all over again with the same set of sample just to really ensure that we get the correct um, result for each testing. And thus, we can conclude that our um, manufactured product are really of good quality and they have passed the requirements or the standards and specifications. Now, this is our formula for our standard deviation. This is square root. This is for the whole thing. The square root is for the whole thing. So again, square root of the summation of the score minus the mean squared divided by n minus one. So it's actually almost similar to that of the average deviation. It's just that we need to get the square root here and we need to um, square the difference between each score and the mean. Okay, so x there again is each score, whether you have 100 or, or even 10 lang, as long as you get the difference between each score and the mean and then you square it, you can get the standard deviation. So just like the average deviation, the n there is the number of determination or the number of sample, or that's the sample size. Um, the e, uh, I don't know how to call that, but anyway, if you get to see this symbol in statistics that is always summation, meaning we have to add everything. Okay? I'll be giving you examples later on the computation side. Let me just give you first the formula. Now, the fourth one is the relative standard deviation. It's also almost similar to the RID or the relative average deviation. It's just that we are going to use the standard deviation here for the measure of dispersion or the measure of variation. So RSD is also known as the coefficient of variation, wherein we need, again, the standard deviation, and then we will be dividing it with the mean. So x na may bar sa taas is our mean, and then i-multiply siya sa 100. So both RAD and RSD will be multiplied by 100, which means they are in percentage. A percent yan silang dalawa. And then the fifth one, <coughs> the fifth, fifth uh, statistical test that we need in QC testing is the range. So range, always remember, it's just the difference between the highest data or the highest value and the smallest value. So we will just compute this R is equal to the largest value or LV minus the smallest value. That's the range. Okay, so uh, let us now have an example and let us compute all the statistical tools using the following uh, measures of concentration of the sodium hydroxide. So this is just hypothetical. For example, we have a solution of sodium hydroxide in the laboratory and we did titration. And uh, after the titration, these are the concentrations in normality of the solution. So we will be <coughs> testing whether the four collected data really do agree with each other, meaning they are close with each other or they are precise. So the first one, uh, the first step is to compute for the mean. So again, the mean is the summation of all the scores and then divide it by the number of sample, okay? So in this case, the mean will be equal to 0 0.2140 plus 0 0.2140 plus 0 0.2152 plus 0 0.2146. And then again, let's divide it, divide it sa number of 
determinations. We have one, two, three, and four. <coughs> Excuse me. So, 0 0.2140 plus 0 0.2140 plus 0 0.2152 plus 0 0.2146 is 0 0.8578. The, and then let's divide this by 4 and then we will get the mean divided by 4. This is 0 0.21445. So this is our mean here. In the exam or in the in our quizzes, you just have to follow the instruction na ibibigay ko whether you are going to round off the final answer to two decimal places or whatever kung ilan yung i-require ko sa pag-round off ninyo. In this case, let's just use the 0 0.21445. That is our mean for <coughs> the data, the set of data. Now, the next one will be the D. Actually, the D or the AD. This is our average deviation. Baka malito kayo. Okay? The D or the AD is the average deviation. And then I have given you the formula for this a while ago. This is the summation of the absolute difference between each score minus the mean and then um, divided by the number of samples okay okay so for this one uh, we have here ad is equal to the summation of each score minus the mean ha so ganito yung gagawin ninyo 0 0.2140 minus the mean which is 0 0.21445 Again, uh, itong dalawang bar na ito represents that we have to get the absolute value, meaning, oh wait, regardless of the sign. So if we will get here a negatively signed answer, then we will just um, convert it sa positive. So summation, so ia add natin, zero point, another 0 0.2140 minus 0 point. 2145 plus 0 0.2152 minus 0 0.21445 plus dito na lang sa baba hindi na 0.2146 minus 0 0.21455 and let's divide everything with the number of or by the number of <coughs> Sample. So we have here 4. So simplify natin sila. 0 0.2140 minus 0 0.21445 <coughs> zero point, uh, zero, 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 uh, one, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.00, 0.
is a 0 0.00045. This is the average deviation. And as you can see, we got a very low um, number here, which means that um, hindi, hindi ganun kalaki ang variation between the results of the experiment, meaning that all the four data na na-collect agree with each other. They are close with each other, or meaning they are precise. Okay, so ito yung for the average deviation. So sundin nyo lang itong formula. And do not forget that we are getting the absolute value when we get the difference between each score and the mean. So kahit na negative yan, gagawin natin siyang positive. Okay? That is, again, for the average deviation, 0.00045. Now, we are done with the mean and the average deviation. Let's move on to the RAD. The RAD is the relative average deviation, and our formula for this is the average deviation divided by the mean times 100. So a while, a while ago, we have computed our mean to be 0 0.0, oh, I forgot, 0 0.21 pala. 0 0.21445, and we have computed the AB to be 0 0.00045. So yun lang yung gagamitin natin. 0 0.00045 divided by the mean, which is 0 0.21445 times 100. Okay? So again, 0 0.00045. 0.045 divided by 0 0.21445 times 100 is uh, two decimal places on the round of natin, 0.21%. So that's how small the relative average deviation is. We can really conclude here that the collected data are precise, they are close with each other, or they are even close to our mean. So that is only based sa average deviation and sa RAD na na compute. Now, let's move on to the third, oh no, the fourth one, the standard deviation. So do not forget again, uh, for the measure of variation, the standard deviation is the most commonly used and ito din yung pinaka ano, accurate among them uh, to really show us whether our set of data is precise or not. So what is again our formula? SD is equal to the square root of the summation of the difference of each score minus the mean. This time it should be squared not absolute value na pero we will not have a negative result pa dito since is is square natin each yung kanilang difference and then sa ilalim is n minus 1 so again the x here is each score uh, yung x na may bar sa taas is the mean and then your small letter n here is the sample size. So number of determination or number of data. And then itong parang e is our summation, meaning we need to add everything also. So again, standard deviation is equal to the square root of uh, this one, isa isa hen, 0 0.2140 minus yung computed mean natin kanina, 0 0.2144. Four four five. Oops. Let me rewrite this. One four four five. We have computed this a while ago. Zero point two one forty minus zero point two one four four five. Do not forget that it should be squared. And then, ah, natin ito. Zero point two one forty 
minus 0 0.21445 squared plus 0 0.2152. So I'm on the third one now. Minus 0 0.21445 squared plus, this, is, this will be the last data, 0 0.2146 minus 0 0.21445 squared divided by, yeah, n minus 1. We have four determinations here, four data, so this is 4 minus 1, okay? So, let's continue. So, we have to get the difference first, 0 0.2140 minus 0 0.2145. 21445 is wait lang, negative 0 0.00045. Do not forget that we will square this pa later. We will square this. We will get the square of this. Um, and then that's the same with the second one since pareha silang 0 0.2140. This is still negative 0 0.00045. Plus 0 0.2150 minus 0 0.21445 is 0 0.0. Wait, I might have missed something. 0 0.2152. 0 0.2152 minus 0 0.21445. 0 0.0075 squared plus, lastly, 0 0.2146 minus 0 .0, uh, 0.0 0.21445 is 0 0.00015 squared. And then 4 minus 1, that's 3. Okay? Yeah. And then let's uh, square each number here. So negative 0 0.00045 squared this is <clears throat> Um, scientific notation na lang gamitin ko para hindi masyado mahaba. So uh, this is 2.025 2.025 times 10 raised to the power of negative 7 plus that is true for the second one since pareha silang na number. Ini square ko ito ha. 10 raised to the power of negative 7 plus 0 0.00075 squared is 5.625 times 10 raised to the power of negative 7 plus lastly 0 0.00015 squared is 2.25 times 10 raised to the power of negative 8. This is still divided by 3. And we are not yet done. I don't have space anymore. But anyway, let's add everything. So 2. 2.025 times 10 raised to the power of negative 7 plus another 2.025 uh, times 10 raised to the power of negative 7 plus 5.625 times 10 raised to the power of negative 7. And then lastly, 2.25 times 10 raised to the power of negative 8. So all in all, this is us. Let me write the square root sign. 9.9 .9 times 10 raised to the power of negative 7. Let's divide this uh, by 3. Uh, let me just continue here. So I don't have space anymore. Uh, let, para hindi malito. let me change the color of my pen. So this is um, SB is equal to 9.9 .9 times 10 raised to the power of negative 7 divided by 3 
is, take note, pukunin pa natin ang square root nito. 3.3 times 10 raised to the power of negative 7. And so, our final answer, let's get the square root. Uh, two decimal places, 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4. So, this is the final answer for our standard deviation. It's a very small number also. And um, this one will confirm our result sa average deviation na in-interpret natin as the set of data is precise. Parehas pa rin. Since very small number ito, it, it will also mean that our set of data is precise. The data are close with each other. They agree with each other. Okay? So again, medyo mahaba yung ating computation for the standard deviation. However, you just have to follow the steps and you just have to be familiar with the formula. Okay? So there are students uh, who tend to forget na you have to square the difference between the mean and the mth score. So do not forget ha, that we have a square here. So each of that will be squared before adding everything and then dividing it with n minus 1. And do not forget that um, the final answer, uh, before you can get the final answer, you have to get the square root first of everything. So just like this, 3.3 .3 times 10 raised to the power of negative 7, when we get the square root, uh, that's, what we, uh, that's when we get the 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of 4. Okay, again, that's 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of 4. Now, um, second to the last one, we have the RSD. So, so RSD, it's almost the same with the relative average deviation. You just need here the standard deviation divided by the mean times 100. So the same set of data, therefore we have the same mean 0 0.21445, but we have uh, pre previously computed for the standard deviation just a while ago. That's 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4. So yan yung gagamitin natin here for the RSD. Uh, 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4 divided by our mean 0 0.21445 times 100. So our RSD here is again 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4 divided by 0 0.21445. Um, and then times 100. So, all in all, this is 0 0.20. Oops, let me check. Need to round this up. 0 0.27%. So, this is now our um, relative standard deviation. So, as you can see, only 0.27% yung deviation of the data from our mean. So again, um, these are hypothetical result of the titration process in getting the concentration of our sodium hydroxide solution and the result of the experiment uh, showed us the, the data are precise, meaning they agree with each other as seen with the low values of the, of the average deviation, RSD, the standard deviation, and also the RSD. But everything started with the mean, and if you got the wrong mean, meaning all the others will be wrong also. Now lastly, for the range, again, the range is just the um, largest value minus the smallest value. So you just have to look here, <coughs> what is the largest and what is the lowest. So this is the largest, 0 0.2152. Minus the lowest, so parehas naman sila, parehas silang lowest. So we'll just get one, 0 0.2140. But 
Ang minus lang natin yan. 0.2150. May 2152 pala. Minus 0.2140. So, this is 0.0012. So, this is our range. <coughs> Um, small value of our range means um, our data is not far from each other also since the highest and the lowest value are close with each other. Okay, so that's it for our statistics. This is just a review. Okay. So again, we need the statistical tools in QC for us to process our numerical data. We can analyze them and we can interpret them using statistical tools or statistical tests. Now, aside from this test, we also use charts and graphs um, in presenting our data to be collected in the QC laboratory or QC department. This may also help us in coming up with a decision for our product during uh, inspection, whether the products um, fit into the standards and specific specifications or not as seen in the graphs or, or in our control charts. Now, uh, for the QC charts, we have two types, the variable chart and the attribute chart. The variable chart will measure or will record all our numerical data as is. Okay, as is yung numerical data, uh, we will really see the numbers for our continuous scale, like if we measure the mass or the weight of something or the volume of our liquid sample. So we will really record it in charts. So we will really see the comparison, um, whether they have the same volume or they have slight difference or a very big difference. Okay, so any any chart of for that, it can be a pie chart. As long as we can really see the numbers there, the numerical measurement um, for our product. So example of variable chart is the mean and the R chart. So it will really give us um, the mean for each set of data, for example. And then for attribute chart, um, this is used for discrete data, meaning those data um, that cannot really be measured, but they can be counted. Okay, so since they can be counted, they can be classified. So example, we have the p-chart. A uh, p-chart yung tawag natin if we want to classify the data in terms of, for example, their defects. Okay, so example, uh, this group here are defective. We have 10 capsules that are defective. Then we have another 10 here that are not defective. Okay, so attribute chart yung tawag dyan. Okay. Nevertheless, we can also make our own control chart uh, using the following. So we have here the control solid line in the chart, uh, which represents the mean of the, of the data or the set of data, or that's the average. And then we have two horizontal parallel lines in each side of the solid line, which will give us or indicate the limits. Okay, so control chart yung gagawin natin ha. Most likely this one is a variable chart because we will be dealing with numbers with um, continuous data product of measurement. So we have here the two lines, the upper upper control limit and the lower uh, lower control limit or the lower line. Sa upper control limit, uh, we we get this through through this formula ucl is equal to mean plus 3 times the standard deviation okay so that is actually ano kasi si upper line kasi is 3 standard deviation above our center line remember our center line is the average or our mean therefore the lower line will just be a uh, three standard deviation below the center so we can get the lower line through this formula lcl is equal to the mean minus 3 times the standard deviation okay so we will use we will use our previous data 
remember yung 0.2140, yung normality of of the NaOH solution, 0 0.140, 0.140, 0.2152, um, and what's the other one? I forgot the last value, 0 0.2146. Okay. <clears throat> this is 0 0.2146. Remember that we have computed the mean, and this is 0 0.2144. Five. And the standard deviation. What was that again? <laughs> the standard deviation is 5.74 times 10. Wait, let me recheck. Five point seventy-four times ten. Wait lang. Five point seventy four times ten raised to the power of negative five. So this was computed a while ago. Now, if we are, if you are going to make your own QC chart, this is how it looks like. You will have class uh, thing like this. Oops. English must straight. I hope I can do this. Okay. So here we get to see the score. So this time it's the normality. And then in here we have the set of data. So data number one, two, three, and four. And then remember we have a center line. And always remember that the center line will be the mean, okay? So it will always be the mean. So you have to make a scale. It's up to you. How are you going to make the intervals here? As long as the same interval sila. So this is zero. And what's our measurement? 0 0.21. Okay. So for example, this is 0 0.21. Um, hang on. Ilan ba ito? 140, 0 0.2140, 0.2140, 0.2140, 0.2140, 0.2140, 0.2140, 0.2140, 0.2146, oops, I need hanggang 0.2152 pala. Anyway, let's just continue. Ah, hindi lang ito siya pantay ha kasi wala tayong line. Ay, 0.2150 pala ito. 0. Paliktad. Let me simplify this. I don't like mabot siya dyan. Uh, let me have by 3. So, so this is 0. 0. 0.2140 0. 2143, 0 0.2143, 0 0.2146, 0 0.2149, 0 0.2152. <clears throat> okay, and then the center line will be 0 0.21445. So I will just locate that maybe here, 21445. So this will be the mean. And that will be a solid line. Again, the mean will always be a solid line for our QC chart. This is the solid line. And we will have, again, two lines that are broken, one above and one below that solid line at the center. And for us to compute for the upper, the upper line, the UCL, our formula is mean plus 3 times the standard deviation. So again, our mean is 0 0.21445 plus 3 times <coughs> the standard deviation, which is 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5. So this is 21445 plus 
3 times 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 is 1.722 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4. And then let's add it some mean. We will have 0 0.2146. So this will be our um, upper control limit. <coughs> Me so 2146. So again, this will be a broken line. So this is what we call the upper control limit. And then for the lower control limit, we will just have to minus ibang formula. So let me delete this first. And then we have here the LCL is equal to the mean minus 3 times the standard deviation. So again, our mean is 0. Point, oops, 0. 0.2144 play on. Anong ginamit ko kanina? 0. 0.21 wait, 3 times 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 times 3 oh, sorry. 3 times 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 plus 0 0.21445. Yeah, 21446. 21445 minus 3, 3 times 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5. So 3 times 5.74 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5. 0 0.21445 minus 1.722 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4. So our lower control limit uh, is uh, four decimal places na lang. 0 0.2143. Okay? So hanapin natin siya. This is it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, this one is a broken line. Okay, so this is the LCL. That's how you make the QC chart. And you just have to plot all the data here. Okay, ipa-plot natin lahat ng data. So the first data is 0 0.2140. So this is that 0 0.2140 here. And then another, the second data is uh, 0 0.2140. And then the third data is 0 0.2152. So it's, it's somewhere here. And 0 0.2146. So this is the last one. So this is our chart here now. But, but sadly, for the QC chart, the data are not in inside the lines. Because for, for the QC chart, man good, you will accept the data if they are... Uh, plotted inside those lines. So, dapat nandito sila sa area na ito. Kaya lang, unfortunately, our given data, though they are they are precise according to the computed standard deviation, if we are going to use the QC chart, they are outside the, the lines. So, most likely, they are out from, from the limits that we have. So, pwede din, uh, the use of QC chart can also influence our decision making whether to accept or to reject our data. It's just that ngayon ha, nasa labas sila. Yung pumasok lang yung last, which is 0 0.2146. But nonetheless, please follow how I made the QC chart. Okay? So, this will be your assignment. Um, we have three data here. Uh, for the first R, it's 0 0.2155, 0 0.2135 for the second R, and 0 0.2145 for the third R. Before you can, before you are going to <coughs> plot the data, you have to compute for the mean, the average deviation, the RAD, um, the standard deviation, RSD, the range, and you have to make a QC chart. So meaning you have to plot this afterwards. So for the for the final answers, you have to round it 
uh, round them off to four decimal places. Any paper will do as long as it is clean. Kindly box the final answers so that I can easily locate them when I check your submission. So that's all for this topic. We will continue with another one.